Hey, how's it going? My name's Isis, but you can call me Zach, and I'm really uncomfortable in this beanie. I I want something to keep me warm, because it is raining. Today, I want to go through a few tips and tricks that I use to save money on both camera equipment and just tech and other things in general. And with the cost of living just constantly going up, especially here in Melbourne, like, man, inflation has been bad. Spending less where you can really can make a difference. Also, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. I will have an editing video coming soon. And on top of that, just more content in general. Please remember, my situation, my circumstances will be different to yours. And because of that, this shouldn't be taken as formal advice on your situation, rather just an insight into how I approach mine. To kick things off, don't get sucked in. Businesses always want you to buy more. That's why we see new flagship phones from every major brand coming out every year. You don't need an iPhone 14 if you already have a 13 unless you fit into that like 1% where there is some particular need for you to have that constant upgrade cycle. It just doesn't make sense for the everyday consumer. It's just unnecessary and it drives more consumption and that's where you get sucked in because when there's all this new stuff constantly being released and every bit of marketing material makes you feel like you're falling behind, then you're gonna start to feel like you need the newer stuff, even though you you might actually not. You might be fine, you know? I'm, I bought an A7 III only recently, and yet they released the A7 IV and the A7 R5. It's like, why didn't I go for those? Well, because the existing A7 III I have is already great. This is about being more in touch with what you want and recognizing that on a more conscious level rather than letting a business tell you this is what you should want because they're not you. Next, I'd suggest just trying to exercise as much patience as possible. That is just be patient. It's easier said than done, but patience can help in two ways. First, you might find a better deal or promotion happening in the future. You won't know unless you wait. Second, and most importantly, it gives you time to make decisions. And this goes well with the point from before about being more in touch with what you want. If you're gonna be buying something, ask yourself, do I need this? Can I actually afford this? Do I want this? And is it actually helping me achieve my goals? Asking yourself those questions shouldn't take long at all, but if you're honest with yourself, it also means that you're less likely to set yourself up for regret later on. The final point I'll make before talking about how I save money once I've decided to buy something is I, I personally despise buy now pay later methods. I just say no, buy now, pay later, instant debt, because that's exactly what it is. It's a way to be put into financial debt, but you don't actually have to have any form of financial security to be put in that debt, which means that if you can't pay it, you're screwed. It's also quite predatory in nature because it particularly appeals to younger people and those who are already financially disadvantaged. Pretty much those who aren't going to be able to afford to pay for this stuff and maybe they won't be able to pay for it now and they'll have their check clear oh, check clear what year are we in they'll have their pay come through in a few weeks sure but people don't always have that certainty and if you work a casual job you'll know this that if you get sick and all of a sudden you don't have the money to pay it is very very stressful if i really really don't have the money a buy now, pay later option will always be like the bottom, the very bottom of my list because that is just, I, I just, I hate it. So now that I've gone through ways that I try and avoid spending where I don't need to, thus saving money, I'm now gonna talk about the ways that I save money when I have decided, yes, I do wanna buy this thing. The first one's pretty obvious, it's just, shop the sales. I always make sure to keep an eye on sales and if I don't need something urgently 
then I'm happy to just, as I said before, exercise that patience, wait a bit. Part of this is just keeping an eye on current prices and sales and having a good idea of what to expect going forward. If something in the past has gone on sale for like 20% off, then it's probably going to happen again in the future. And I mean, for photography, for example, you probably have seen sales before. They usually go up to about 20, maybe 25% off. I, I don't think I've ever seen a flat 30% off. And usually what I'll see is like 15% off. Keep that in mind, varies depending on what you're buying. The next thing that I do is I use cash rewards, which provides me with a percentage cash back depending on the store that I shop from every time that I use one of the cash reward affiliate links. It's crazy to me how few people actually know about this and yet would benefit from it so greatly. I found that that cash back typically does stack on top of sales, does depend on the terms and conditions for each store, but it means that if I'm already getting 20% off a certain product and I can get another 10% cash back, that is technically it's less than 30% off. It'll be about 28%, something like that. But 28% off of something is way better than zero. Mind you, I'm not being paid, nor am I being sponsored to say any of this about cash rewards. I just genuinely enjoy getting cash back on purchases where I otherwise wouldn't have. It's, it's extra savings. People will be like, oh, but it takes more time to get that money back. But it's like, if you didn't do it, you wouldn't get the money back anyways. And it's just, it pops up. Cool. I've got my referral link in the description below. Pretty much if you make a qualifying purchase of, I believe currently it's $20 within 14 days of signing up, then you end up getting a bonus cash back again, currently of $10 and I get a bonus cash back as well of $10 for referring you. So helps you out, helps me out as well. And it's free. So like, you know, gotta pay rent somehow. <laughs> Next is price matching. Price matching is incredibly powerful if you use it in conjunction with some of these other things, but it also means that you can end up buying the product that you want for the price that you want at a retailer that you prefer. But what's better is when you start to use it in conjunction with something like cash rewards. On cash rewards, there are multiple retailers that provide a cash back that sell camera lenses. And those retailers will tend to stock similar or the same products. When they stock the same products, it means that if they accept price matching, then you basically get to choose which one that you want to buy from and also get the cash back from. Say one of these retailers has a cash back of 1%, right? That's pretty much nothing. But the next one has a cash back of 10%. If they allow you to price match and they don't exclude price matching from their cash back, then you're in luck because you can then go ahead, find whatever the cheapest price is at the time, price match it, and then get that cash back on top. Plus you get to choose which retailer you wanna buy from, which can be really convenient if you live far away from a physical location, for example. And I say that because you can still use cash rewards with click and collect as long as the store allows it. I'm sure you've seen things like student pricing for movies or mini golf or the cinema, but there's more. For example, one that many know, but many might not, is the Apple Education Store, where you can get 10% off, or something around 10% off certain products, including Macs, which, if you're an Apple user, is actually pretty substantial. On top of that, there are lots of student discounts for software, things like Adobe Creative Cloud, even though it's still very, very, very expensive, but it is a lot cheaper if you go with that student pricing compared to if you're paying full price. And as a cherry on the cake, lots of places of study actually provide software licenses to students, and it might not just be Microsoft Office, which is a pretty standard one that you'll see. Consider that the next time that you need some sort of software. Another thing to look out for are things like cashbacks, where I know that camera manufacturers love to do this. They'll offer, you know, $200 cashback with this lens or $300 cashback with this camera. That's good, you know? 
if you if you actually intend on buying it. Don't again, don't get sucked in. And then if they allow, you can do things like cash rewards or price matching, which I know that Sony does allow for most of those cashback things. Though again, terms and conditions change over time. It's worked for me in the past, but might not necessarily work in the future. The very last thing I'm going to say is if you buy Apple products and you ever see Apple gift cards for 10% off, that 10% off really does convert into 10% off of whatever product that you will buy if you do plan on buying it. But you can also compound that with something like, say, the student discount. So you can actually end up saving like 18% or so off of an Apple product, which is actually quite good. Now I gotta ask you, what's the best deal on tech that you've gotten? Comment down below, cause I'd love to hear it. Uh, I've got, I've had some, I've had some pretty good deals, but I'm sure other people have had better as well. And as always, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more and prints and presets available at the link in the description. Make sure to check them out. I've got some really, really nice street photography prints as well as just an arrangement of everything else. If you're a photographer, presets are a great way to get an insight into say how I edit a photo and the sort of process that I use to get the looks that I like. Did I mention there's a free adjustment mask preset pack? Like, pretty good. Anyways, that's it. I'll leave you to it. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. And again, if it's night, seriously, get some sleep because if you're staying up watching this, no, no good, no good. Sleep is important. Why was the spaghetti steady? After all, you wouldn't say that that spaghetti would be ready. I'm so sorry. <laughs>